Hi there, and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be installing Windows Small Business Server 2003. First thing to note is this is quite old software now, so please only do this for testing or education or just for playing with old software. Small Business Server or Windows Server 2003 is way too old to be deploying in production environments. And with that, let's get started. So, I'm using VMware Workstation here, but you can use any virtual machine software or indeed uh, real hardware. Um, so to get started with, I'm going to start and create my virtual machine. And because we're using Small Business Server, we need to make um, we need to make sure we're using in install an operating system later. Otherwise, the installation might not go through correctly. Uh, VMware does detect operating systems. Um, using the install media and it can perform an unattended install for you but with small business serving you really should tackle the install yourself I'm going to select Microsoft Windows and Server 2003 small business I am going to call this SBS 03 now your installation drive should be between 200 gigs or late or bigger um, just to make sure that there's enough space for Exchange, SharePoint and all that other stuff. I'm now going to click Customize Hardware and I'm going to change the RAM from 384 meg to 2 gigabytes. I'm going to set it to two processors and I'm going to change to one of my custom networks. We don't need the sound controller or the printer, so we can get rid of these. And with that, we should have everything we need to get started. So I'm going to click Finish. And now I'm going to power on the virtual machine. OK, so the installer has now loaded successfully. We're going to press Enter to continue. Um, we're going to hit F8 to read the license agreement and accept it. And here we can see we can select our hard drive to install. I am going to hit enter to continue and we're going to choose to use the NTFS file system and format quickly. So here you can see the setup is formatting the hard drive ready to install Small Business Server. And now the setup is starting to copy the files over to the hard drive and while this takes place I am going to pause the recording to save you guys some time. OK, so now the setup has finished copying the files, um, now we need to reboot into the main setup. So here you can see the setup is now progressing. Um, there are a few prompts that we'll need to do a few um, along the way, so I will pause the recording again and resume when the first prompt appears. OK, so here we have the first prompt, prompting us to change our regional settings. Now, I'm installing this in the United Kingdom, so I'm going to be changing my options to United Kingdom. Now, I'm going to be removing the default US keyboard, but you guys don't have to and I'm going to get a warning to say that it's not actually going to do this until next time it reboots. That's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to hit next and I'm going to enter my um, organization information. And I'm going to click next. Now here I'm go I will need to enter a product key. I am going to hit next and I'm going to do this later. And now we need to enter our computer name. This is quite important because we will only have one opportunity to change this later on. So you guys need to make sure you get this right. And I'm going to enter my administrator password. And click next. Now I'm going to change my time zone. I'm in London, so I'm going to be changing this to Greenwich Mean Time. Just going to have a quick check to make sure the time and date is correct, which it is and I'm going to click next and now we're back into the setup process there is one more prompt that will come up during the installation process so as before I'm going to pause the recording and resume when the next prompt appears 
So it looks like I was a little bit wrong about the second prompt that normally comes up with standard uh, Windows Server 2003, but now you can see that the uh, SBS03 is booting up for the first time, and we can log in for the first time. Okay, so here we are at the login prompt. I'm going to push Control Delete on my keyboard, or in VMware, I'm going to push the little button that does that for me. And I'm going to log in using the administrator credentials I defined in the setup process. Okay, now we, here we are at the desktop. In just a second, the setup will continue. Now down here I'm being prompted to increase my screen resolution, so I'm going to do that, and in fact I'm going to do that a little bit more, just so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so here we are at the continue um, Microsoft Windows Small Business Server setup. This is when the Small Business Server converts itself from being standard Windows Server 2003 into being Small Business Server with uh, Exchange, SharePoint, and all those other lovely stuff. So I'm going to click Next. Now I am warned that the computer only has one network adapter. The reason I'm getting this warning is because Small Business Server can also act as your router. So the idea was that you could plug your your broadband router into one side of the small business server and your local area network in the other side and the small business server would also act as a basic firewall router. So we don't actually need to use this functionality here so I'm going to click next. Now here you are prompted to enter your company information. If we were using this back in the day in a production environment, I would fill all this out, but as we're using this just in a test and, and learning environment, I'm going to click Next. And now we're prompted to enter our internal dis domain information. So remember I said that we had one opportunity to change the name of the server, this is where it is. So our internal DNS domain name is going to be used for Microsoft Active Directory. Uh, once this is set you cannot change it without reinstalling your server and reconnecting all your clients, so I be careful what you uh, set this to and make sure it's correct. The information I've got shown here is correct, so I'm going to click next. Okay, so I got this warning message to say that there is an existing DHCP server on the local area network and small business server would really like to be the DHCP server so we can click no to use our, continue using our existing DHCP server or we can click um, yes to use the small business server as our DHCP server. So I'm going to click yes. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable my DHCP server. And because I'm using VMware, it's as easy as unticking a box. Okay, so the next thing we need to check is that our local area network configuration is, is set correctly. So, as you can see here, because we had DHCP enabled, it's going to uh, prompt us the current IP address that it has. I'm going to be changing this because I want my small business server to be the first IP address. The subnet mask is correct and the default gateway is correct. So now I'm going to click next and it's going to warn me that I've modified the existing settings and are we sure that we want to do that? I am, so I'm going to click OK. Now this is an interesting step that you don't normally see with 
server 2003. So during the setup process, we, uh, Small Business Server is going to reboot several times and it's asking for your login password just so that it can automatically log itself in so basically you can walk away and get a cup of tea. So you don't have to do this because you can choose to log in manually but I'm just going to put my password in there and click next. So now it's saying that the setup process will take approximately 30 minutes. Believe me, it does. If not, it takes longer. Um, so I'm going to click next and it's going to begin the setup process. So the first start, the first part of this setup process is it is going to promote itself to be a Active Directory domain controller. Um, then it will reboot and then it will most likely uh, ask for disk 2. So I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to resume when there's a prompt for something for us to do. Okay, so the domain controller has now been installed and the small business server is rebooting for the first time. So the setup will then boot back up and continue. Okay, so now that we've rebooted, the server is now a Active Directory domain controller and now we're going to start config it's now automatically going to start configuring other services that are needed to install Microsoft Exchange such as internet information services and SMTP services that kind of thing this part of the installation may take a while so I'm going to pause again and resume when there's a prompt on screen okay so now we're prompted with the component selection so this is where you get to choose which components of Small Business Server you actually want to use. Anything under the Server Tools section is mandatory. Um, however, you can choose to not install some of the client services such as Outlook 2003. So for instance, if you purchased your Small Business Server and it didn't come with Outlook, you would have to uncheck that, otherwise the installation would fail because you need the legitimate Outlook 2003 disk for that to work. Microsoft Exchange Server and Pack Services are also uh, optional. So I'm not going to be installing Pack Services here because I'm using a virtual machine and it doesn't have a modem. Um, Microsoft Exchange Server is also optional, however, most people are going to want to install that because it's free. Um, However, the next thing we're going to look at here is you see we have this drive option. So I am going to um, first, I'm going to add a second hard drive to the virtual machine um, because it's a good idea to install Microsoft Exchange and some of the client deployment onto a second drive. So I am going to go into my VMware and, and I'm going to add a second virtual hard drive. This hard drive is going to be 400 gigs. And I'm going to click OK. Now the drive has been hot plugged into the virtual machine, so I can go into computer management, which was by right clicking on my computer. And I'm going to click next and select the drive to convert. And I'm going to add a new partition. Click next and drive letter E, I'm going to label it data and perform a quick format and now the drive is formatting. Okay we're done with disk management now so we can close that out. So here you can see we can now change the path of where we want to install certain components. For the exchange server I'm going to put that onto the E drive and I'm going to get a warning to say that the folder doesn't exist and do we want to create it? Yes we do. With the so now we've changed the path of that, we can now click next and you can see here now we get to change the path of certain stores and shared folders. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the path of the user shared areas and for that I'm going to cheat and just change the drive letter and we get the same message and I'm going to do the same for the client app applications folder. OK, I'm going to leave SQL Server alone and to continue I'm going to click Next. 
So here we get a breakdown of what the small business server is going to have installed. You can see here we've got our client apps as well. So I'm going to hit next and the installation is now going to start. Okay, so now you can see here that we are prompted to insert disk 2. So to do this, I'm literally just going to open my CD drive and put in the second disk. There we go, the second disk is in, so I'm going to click OK and it's going to chug away with disk 2. OK, so now you can see the setup has finished installing Microsoft Exchange and we're prompted to insert disk 3. I'm just going to do that quickly. And when the disk is in, we can click OK. And you can see, you can hear now the, you might be able to hear my disk drive is spinning up and we are going to continue with the components on disk number 3. Okay, so now I'm being prompted to insert disk 4. Uh, note, depending on what build of Small Business Server 2003 you have, you may not have a uh, disk 4, so you might not get asked for it. Um, but later versions uh, of Small Business Server 2003 did include a fourth disk in, and then the Outlook disk on top of that. So now I've inserted the disk, I'm going to click OK and we are going to churn away on disk 4. Okay, so now we're prompted to insert the last disk, which is the Outlook 2003 CD. So I'm going to pop this in the drive, and then I am going to click OK, and the setup will continue. Once the setup process has been complete, you will see a, a setup success screen, and upon clicking OK, the server will restart. Once the server is restarted, you'll be presented with this screen, which is your little completing to-do list that you have to do at the end of the setup. And with that, we will be looking at this in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.